Hello, this is Sanford Manufacturing, right? Always great doing business with you. I hope I didn't catch you at a bad time. I'm sorry for the sudden text. This is Caroline Matthews with Matthews Industries. Oh, yes, good evening. You must be Mrs. Matthews, wife of Mr. James Matthews of Matthews Industries, is that right? No problem. What can I do for you, Mrs. Matthews? I'm so sorry about earlier. I visited you without an appointment. I was really short on time. I hope I didn't interrupt anything important. And thank you for allowing me to exchange line info with you. Just so much easier conversing this way. Oh, please. It was no problem. We've been doing business for a long time. You've been rescued by Matthews Industries countless times in the past. So, if there's anything I can do for you, just ask. When we exchanged line info today, you mentioned that there was something you wanted to discuss. Something that was confidential. Is that right? Yes, that's right. I really couldn't talk about it when I met you. Like you said, it's confidential. And it's something that could be potentially quite devastating for your company. It would cause quite a commotion if one of your employees heard about this and rumors started to spread. You know what I mean. Information that's devastating for Sanford Manufacturing? Now, what could that be? I'm not aware of any company takeover or anything like that. Oh, no. Not a takeover bid or anything like that. It just involves our two companies. I'm really sorry to break this to you, but... As of the end of next month, we will cease all business cooperation with Sanford Manufacturing. From the following month, we will no longer require that you provide us with your products. We will receive the last order on the 31st of the next month, and after that, I regret to say, no further business will be conducted. We at Matthews Industries really appreciate your partnership these many years and hope you will continue to prosper. Uh, pardon me? Are you saying that you're going to sever all ties with our company? But we currently have a major product consignment agreement with Matthews Industries. That would be devastating for our company. Are you sure of this? Has Mr. Matthews agreed to this? What did you mean by cease business relations? Exactly what that means. There will no longer be any business transactions between Matthews Industries and Sanford Manufacturing. It can't be any more clear than that. I really hate to do this. Our companies have been doing business for years, but it just couldn't be avoided. It's nothing personal. We had to make some drastic cuts in our operation. Regarding your current products that you provide us with, we are in the process of ordering from a foreign manufacturer at a way lower cost. But the quality is just as good. I'm sorry, but it's competition. We have to survive in this dog-eat-dog -dog world. Therefore, all existing contracts with Sanford Manufacturing has been terminated. I was going through all of our current contracts and the product agreement with you was just coming up and I looked into it compared prices and came to the conclusion that we would not extend that contract. This is all so sudden, Mrs. Matthews. I don't know how to react to all this just yet. But such a drastic decision at a time like this would disrupt our entire operation. Our contract agreement with Matthews Industries is a major business partnership. I'm sure you are well aware. And you're telling me that this substantial business collaboration will suddenly end next month? It's unthinkable. Do you realize the impact this will have on our entire business operation? I understand your concern, but the decision has already been made. We are not exactly doing well either. We have to implement these drastic measures to weather the storm. Like I said, it's nothing personal, all business. I really hope you understand. It's a decision we had to make. I understand that you have your company's interest in mind. And the economic situation is not all that great, but... From next month? Seriously? I wish we had more advance notice so that we could get our marketing team to somehow cover the shutdown. Or in a worst case scenario, cut some of our staff. I really can't accept this decision. We should have been given ample warning. To be honest, if you cut us off, we may go bankrupt. Do you realize that? I would like to speak directly to Mr. Matthews regarding this matter. This certainly is not like him. I need to hear it directly from him. I'm sorry, but that's just not possible. My husband is currently on business overseas and won't be returning until the end of next month. He left me in charge. His schedule is fully booked. If there's anything you have to say, you talk to me. That's not possible. I need to speak with him. I beg of you, please. Could you think this over? We've been business partners for a very long time. Doesn't that count for anything? We've done your company numerous favors in the past. Please, I ask that you reconsider. 
Our companies have been in business together since my grandfather's time. To cut us off like this is just not right. I took over this business from my father and we continue to do business together for the last 15 years. We're almost like family. As for our product, we even have orders from overseas, much less domestic clients. The quality and workmanship of our products are top notch. A cheaper foreign product would never match our high standards. So I ask you, please reconsider. Let me speak with Mr. Matthews. After all these years, are we not allowed this courtesy? Please, this is getting tiresome, Mr. Sanford. I wish you would just accept this business decision and end this pleading. Pardon me? All this talk of long business relations, or that we're like family, or... But the quality and skill of your workers, it means nothing. What it comes down to is profits. Contemplating all what you said would only hamper our business. You're in the business of making money, right? And we're not a charity either. As long as we can obtain products that are inexpensive, we will be fine. A very simple business decision, don't you agree? My decision will allow our company to increase our profits and expand the company. And eventually my son will take over as president and all will be fine and dandy. That's all I'm concerned about. I'm not sure what you're getting at, Mrs. Matthews. You just talked about your grandfather starting the company, so you're well aware, aren't you? What I'm saying is, I'm Mr. Matthews' second wife. Oh, uh, right. I'm aware of that, but... Which makes it all easier for you to understand, I have a son. He just graduated from university. But he's not directly related to Mr. Matthews, the president, and so... He's sort of in an inferior position when it comes to family ties, I'm sure you understand. For example, there's the problem of Mr. Matthews' son, who is three years older than my son. So what I'm trying to do here is build a sound business record for him so that when the time comes to select the next president, my son will take the credit for making the company such a success and thus be appointed the new president. What I'm trying to achieve is to convince everybody that my son is a much better choice than his real son. That's the reason I'm making this sound decision to cut costs. We cut production costs, such as with Sanford Manufacturing, and voila! Profits go up and everyone's happy. Uh, let me get this straight, Miss Matthews. You're doing this in order for your son to someday become president? And you're cutting ties with our company just to achieve this goal of yours? Simply put, but yes, you're exactly right. That's the plan. This stuff you talk about, uh, family ties, quality products, good craftsmanship, none of that matters. Of the customers buying our products, none of them can tell the difference. They're not that sophisticated. The products you make all look the same. Everything is hidden from view anyway. Reminds me of that saying, if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, then it may just be a duck. <laughs> so that's why I'm cutting you guys out. We'll be getting our products from a cheap foreign manufacturer, which will save us a bundle, and we'll see our profits skyrocket. Are you serious, Miss Matthews? You cut us out just for that reason? So let me get this straight, Miss Matthews. You don't care what happens to our company as long as you get your profit, is that it? Do you realize what you're doing is totally unprofessional? This is completely unconscionable. No way that this is legit. Professional or not, it does not concern me in the least bit. <laughs> Nobody gives a hoot if an insignificant company like Sanford goes under. It's of little consequence to us. There are plenty of other companies out there like yours and way cheaper. What's more, my son's career and my future is on the line here. I will do anything to make that a reality. There is no way I'm going to throw in the towel for that patronizing son of his. That will never happen. You mark my words. This is all getting very tedious. For the last time, we at Matthews Industries no longer need your services. So now, no more of this begging to reconsider BS. Just accept the fact and go on your way if you don't mind. I'm really busy right now. Okay, Mrs. Matthews, I hear you loud and clear. As you wish, we will no longer provide you with our product. The last batch we ship should arrive by the end of the week. That will be the final shipment. Please convey our appreciation to Mr. Matthews for the many years of business that we enjoyed. And we regret this unfortunate outcome. No way! Why would I do that? Anyway, he's overseas for God knows how long. Too much trouble to get in touch with him. Just don't show your face around our offices anymore. Thank you.
Hello, this is James, right? James Sanford? Did I get the right line address? This is Randy from the time working over there. Holy smoke, Randy! How the hell have you been? It's been ages. I hear you took over your father's business. How's that going? It's going great, thanks for asking. Uh, it was a bit hectic at first, but business is gradually picking up. I really have to thank you for that, Jim. I was able to apprentice at Sanford Manufacturing for a few years and learned some very important lessons while I was there. It was tough at times, but the experience I gained was invaluable. I learned that quality, skill, and hard work is important. And what's more, you taught me the importance of maintaining relationships. But I only just started, so we're still struggling, but <laughs> I'm optimistic. Come on, Randy. You're being way too modest. I saw the article in the Times the other day. Something about an up-and-coming young company president. There was a big photo of you in the article. You're looking pretty good. Please, Jim. You're blowing it all out of proportion. The Regional Times is just some three-page local paper. Nobody reads that thing. Still, they wrote about you. Local paper or not, I never got that kind of treatment. You should be proud. Man, I'm so glad you were so successful. I'm looking forward to see how you'll do going forward. And I'm rooting for you all the way, Randy. It's all thanks to you and your father. You guys took me on as an apprentice and really showed me the ropes. It got me in shape to take over my father's business. And never about me, Jim. I recently heard about the trouble you were in. The story is that Matthews Industries terminated the contract you had with him. I thought you were in good terms with him. I remember I dealt with him regularly while I was there. They seemed pretty content with the products you were providing. What's up? Wow, that was fast. It's a fairly interrelated industry, I suppose. Yeah, I heard of several other companies similar to yours that we do business with and they got sacked. I got a call from one of them that even one of the major outfits got the boot, meaning Sanford Manufacturing. Yeah, it's true. We got the boot all right. The wife of the president, Mrs. Matthews, sort of just decided on it out of the blue with no advance warning. We were taken completely off guard. Now, I'm not sure what Mr. Matthews feels about all this. Apparently, he's overseas at the moment and won't be back for quite some time. So, there is nothing I can do, really. Anyways, it's pretty devastating for our firm. If only we had a little advance warning, we could have taken the necessary steps. I won't go so far as saying we'll go bankrupt or anything, but I don't know what to do. I don't want to have to lay anybody off, but I may have to down the line. I have a suggestion, Jim. If you've already been cut off by Matthews Industries, what do you say about working with us? Uh, pardon me? Like I said, we're gradually growing and I was just thinking about expanding. It may be an opportune time for us. The banks are happy with our record and they're willing to invest, so it may be a good chance to repay you for all you taught me. Besides, if Sanford Manufacturing could work with our up-and-coming company, it would certainly boost our image, not to mention our profits. To be honest, I was going to contact you a lot sooner for advice, but, as you know, it's only been a few years since I ended my apprenticeship with Sanford. I didn't want people to think I was relying on you guys to run the company. Just stupid pride, I know. You had a pretty big account with Matthews Industries and figured you wouldn't give us the time of day. <laughs> this may sound insensitive, but I think it's great timing. If you lost that account with MI, could you do work for us? What do you say? Are you kidding me? Of course we'll do it. I should be begging you to give us work, to be honest. Really? Are you sure? Man, that would be great. I never thought I would be able to work with a prestigious company like yours. You guys are a legend in the industry. Did you know that? Anyways, we should discuss the details on how to go forward. Would you mind if I stopped off at your company tomorrow? I mean, if you have the time, that is. I know you're busy and all. It would be great to see everybody again. It's been years. Stop by any time you like. Pick a time most convenient for you. I'll make the time. Wait till I tell everybody who's coming. They will be overjoyed. Get ready for a wild reception, Randy. And Randy, thanks for this. You're a godsend. Please, Jim. I should be thanking you. I can finally repay you for all that you did for me. Okay, then. Let's talk tomorrow. I'm looking forward to seeing you again and everyone else. Mr. Sanford, are you seeing this? P please reply, would you? I need you to ship us those products by tomorrow. Uh, same products as before, please. How many boxes of those parts can you provide? We would prefer about 20 units or whatever you guys can manage. Pardon me? Who's this? 
Oh, is this Mrs. Matthews again? I thought we concluded our business already. And what are you talking about shipments? We have no units to ship at the moment. Besides, I thought we terminated all contracts with you. You no longer wanted our business. That was last month, as I recall. Weren't you going to get your products from overseas? A more inexpensive producer or something? Wasn't that what you said? Yes, well, the whole thing just didn't go as planned. The language barrier is so bad, nobody over there speaks any English, for God's sake. We weren't even able to put in an order for the longest time. You would think someone over there speaks English. Anyways, we finally got an order in, but then there was this labor strike over there, and all operations were put on hold. Can you believe it? The products finally got loaded onto the shipping crates when a storm hit, and the ship was diverted to the nearest port, and it apparently sat in port for days. How they can even manage to maintain customers, I have no idea. Well, all this trouble only adds to the overall cost. Delay insurance. Not to mention reimbursing our customers for the delay, it's just one big mess. We finally received the shipment today, and it turns out the configuration was all wrong. And the quality and craftsmanship were of really low quality. As you can probably imagine, our product processing line has stopped operation because of this inadequate component. Oh, really? I'm so sorry to hear that. That must have been quite devastating to your overall operation. At this rate, we may have to cut cost. We'll probably be in the red. So I figured we should give up on receiving those components from overseas. So I came to the conclusion that we will require your products again. Therefore, I'm willing to reconsider and use your products again. So if you can ship them out ASAP, I would be more than grateful. Let's forget about what I said last month and let's resume business. What do you say? I already have the contract ready, so let's get this signed and have these shipments in by tomorrow if you can. Oh, yes, and the cost must be the same as what it was for the overseas products, and not a penny higher. You got that? That would mean you will be required to deduct approximately 30% from your standard pricing. I'm sorry, but times are tough. No, Mrs. Matthews. I'm going to have to pass on this offer. I mean, seriously? Do you really think I would sign such a lopsided contract? 30%? Seriously? As a matter of fact, even if we went back to the usual price, we will never do business with Matthews Industries ever again. Hold on a minute, Mr. Sanford. What are you saying? That you aren't going to send us the products? That's right. You terminated our contract. So we no longer have any business relations with you. Simple as that. And I have no intention of signing any new contract with you either. We will not be producing any products for you going forward. How could you say that? We've done business for years. We're currently in a dire situation. Are you just going to let us suffer the consequences? Just have the unit shipped to us ASAP. I demand that you do so. Sorry. We have no connections to Matthews Industries anymore. You are no longer one of our customers, and we cut all business ties with you. Hold on a second there. How can you even say that? Do you know how many years we've given you business? An insignificant little manufacturing firm like yours? We practically built your company. You should be grateful. You really know how to repay us for making your company a success. Such arrogance. I should be saying that to you, Mrs. Matthews. You had a good thing going here. You had a quality product shipped to you on a regular basis without any delays or disruptions over the years. When there were any problems, we solved it immediately. Sometimes even reimbursing you for any unfortunate issues. But then it just cut us off without any prior warning. So you could obtain a cheaper product, which turned out not to be so cheap after all. I remember you saying that quality or past history of our relations was of no concern. Isn't that what you said? Anyway, if we made our products at a 30% discount, we'd go bankrupt overnight. We wouldn't make a cent working with you. So why would we do business with Matthews Industries? If there was no incentive in doing so. After all, we are not a charity. All right, all right, have it your way. Forget the 30%. Just charge us at the usual price then. Just get those parts over here ASAP. No delays. You got that? Have you even heard a word I said, for God's sake? I said we will never do business with Matthews Industries again. Do you understand English? We will no longer have any business relations. So, no more shipments. Not tomorrow. Not ever. You got that? Anyway, we have a contract with another company and our product processing line is full. No matter how much you scream bloody murder, there is nothing I can do about it. We're full up gone totally bonkers 
Do you really think you can treat us like that? We're a major company around here. You think you can continue doing business without us? We could crush your little manufacturing firm with one phone call if we had to. You're making a grave mistake by denying us. You do understand, don't you, Mr. Sanford? Go right ahead, Mrs. Matthews. Give it your best shot. I'd really like to see you try. But I must warn you, Mrs. Matthews, you're way in over your head on this. All those companies you gave the boot to? Well, as it turns out, they're all on my side on this issue. Or do you plan to bankrupt us all? All those companies have agreed to never do business with Matthews Industries ever again. We've contacted all our other business partners regarding this matter, and they have all agreed to cease business with you. By the looks of it, you seem to have lost all your clients. Congratulations. Seriously? Does that mean we won't be able to receive any shipments from you or any other company? You have to be kidding me. How do you expect us to continue doing business? All our operations will be forced to stop. You can't do this. Yeah, looks that way. Please, James. I ask you to reconsider. I apologize, so please, let's talk about this. I'm sure we can work something out. Uh, there's no need to cut all ties, right? Please, I beg of you. At this rate, our company will go bankrupt. I don't think anybody will care if a company run by the likes of you goes under. You have no understanding or compassion for people. People run these companies, not machines. Even if your son took over and ran the company, I doubt it would have lasted very long. How could you say such a thing? My son would have made a great CEO. But please, help me out here, please. Let's forget the past and start over, please. You dug your own hole, Mrs. Matthews. I suggest you find a shovel and dig yourself out somehow. Connection to people is very important in a business like this, or for that matter, any business, big or small. Don't ever trash talk small businesses like ours ever again. You got that? Okay then, I'm really busy. I better get back to work. Thank you for all these years of business. I wish you luck. Goodbye, Mrs. Matthews. A few days later, Mrs. Matthews visited the company asking for a meeting, but I refused to meet with her. She stood her ground and would not leave. She eventually made such a scene that the police were called, and she was hauled away screaming and yelling. A few weeks later, Mr. Matthews came back from overseas, frantically demanding why the company was on the verge of bankruptcy. I heard he was furious with his wife and son, and had them kicked out. Apparently, he divorced her a few months later. Mr. Matthews came to my office and apologized for the damage his wife caused all the subcontractors and offered to reimburse us for any damages incurred while he was gone. He brought all his staff members to my office and then begged us to reconsider. We all gave in and eventually resumed business with MI under more favorable conditions. Last I heard, the former Mrs. Matthews and her son moved back east to her family's home. If only she hadn't been so greedy. She could have led a quiet and comfortable life as the president's wife. What a total waste. She could have been happy. I'm super busy now that we're doing business with Randy's firm and with the rekindled relationship with Matthews Industries. Business is currently going great. We even had to add more staff because of the heavy workload. This was all thanks to Randy who contacted me at just the right time and saved the day. Having good friends is important. What else can I say?